This is the intro to our optical illusion section. And this worksheet that you have in front of you, that you will have in front of you soon, has one, two, three, four, flip it around, five, six, seven illusions that you're gonna try first. So on that first illusion, don't forget to write your name and put uh, whatever class number you're in here. First illusion is called the vanishing point illusion. And this one you could also shade into to utilize those shading skills. What you're gonna wanna do for practice right here is you're going to want to find uh, a vanishing point. Now you could put this wherever you would like. So I'm gonna go ahead and add mine right there. Feel free to pause this video at any time. And then I'm gonna add a bunch of these vanishing point lines. Now because we did perspective, this should make some sense and I am going to double line a few of them. Take my ruler. And I'm making diagonal lines essentially. here I could shade in where it's closest to the vanishing point pretty heavy and dark and then I can go medium to light and I could practice shading like this and then I could add shading here add shading here and add a little shading here and completely finish it out so it kind of looks like that so that is one technique and the most simplest is the vanishing point, okay? Now this is a little bit of more of a challenge with the vanishing point. So what we're doing is we're dividing our paper a lot like our mandala here. And I'm gonna find my center, line up the corners, there we go, add a plus sign once I find that center. Step one, got it. Step two, add vanishing points. Oh, okay, so, oh, I see I'm making a square. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a point here. I'm gonna try to keep it in the same distance so it actually makes a square here. From there, uh, part three, add a square and add diamonds. So let me go ahead and connect. I'm going to add a line through it though, so make sure you go past that point. So I'm adding a square within the square, utilizing those points. Take my ruler. There we go. So that's step three. Cool. So I have my edges completed. Now it says add my diamond shape. So if I'm looking at this and I'm trying to figure out where my diamond shapes are, I see them. So I have a diamond here, okay, diamond here, diamond here, and a diamond right there. So if I was to add a diamond, it looks like I'm going to this corner, and I'm going to add an extra dot right there for my first diamond. And again, pause this video if you have to, to try and create this illusion. And then how you shade this in will matter too. So... This looks pretty cool. Okay, now I'm gonna continue adding these diamond shapes all over. All right. Okay. Here we go. So I'm gonna add one to this side and add one to this side. Cool, that's looking cool. So this is a little bit more of an advanced optical illusion. It's almost like a kaleidoscope kind of look. And it's cool. So that's 
pretty that looks pretty cool so it looks like it recedes it looks like it can kind of come in and come out now let's go ahead and go on to our next illusion this one's called bent paper so bent paper step one step two step three step four so step one it says draw a diagonal line so there's one two there's three lines drawn i'm gonna go ahead and draw some diagonal lines I'm going to add this diagonal line, make this one go in the opposite direction, and I'll make this one kind of come back in. So that's a good step one. Step two, um, add horizontal lines. Oh, okay, so I have to add horizontal lines, but I have to also change the direction of them a little bit. Oh, okay, so I'm going to stop at the top here in that section, just draw a straight line. This section will dip a little bit. This next section, I can actually draw it like it's kind of sloping up. And this next one, I could draw like it's a big, big, big slope. Okay, so from there, I'm gonna add the same exact pattern of what I just did, and then I could shade it in. So it'll look like the paper is semi-bent. And this is a cool one. This is a pretty easy one to do. Deeper slopes sometimes look really good. And I can add a bunch more uh, if I want to. And then shading it in where it meets, I can make go a little darker, and then lighter, and then medium. So where they meet, again, darker, lighter, go a little darker here too so it can go dark medium light and then medium dark that can look really nice and I could repeat that I want to make a maybe a few more bent papers in here so repeat and shade that's kind of the next step so that can look really 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 cool a lot of artists um, like this one so it's fairly easy this next one is called the checkerboard grid this always looks cool as long as you do it correctly so the first step is actually creating a grid like this Second step is you add a shape. Now you could add a shape or you could add a letter. You could even add words to this if this spot is big enough. And from there, so once you add the shape, and we can look a little closer into there, you would fill in every other one. So let's see, I'm gonna fill this in. This stays white, fill this in, this stays white. And I'm gonna fill this in now. The opposite would happen on the next row. So I know I'm filling this in, so this is not filled in. So then I know I'm filling this in. Right here, this creates two separate shapes. So that means I'm also utilizing that inside of my pattern. So now this row has more involved. So I know if I'm shading this in, this is not shaded in, then this part has to be shaded in because that's considered an extra shape. Now because that shaded in, this wouldn't be, then this would because this isn't. So it's every other one, but you have to include your shapes here. Now, because that's filled in, let me go ahead and just fill these in for you. Because that is filled in, that's not, and because this isn't, because this is. So it's every other one, right? The checkerboard. So I'm going to do the next row. Let's see. So not filled in, filled in. This, this is, this isn't, but then, okay. So this is where it gets tricky. That little spot's white, so that means this is dark. And because this is dark, too close together, right side to side can't be dark. So this stays light, because this is white, then I fill this in. So this is where it could get a little tricky and you really gotta use some concentration in order to figure out what you're shading in and what you're not shading in. And then it'll look like a kind of a camouflage checkerboard pattern. This can look really cool, but you have to have a little bit of patience. I would make dots so then you know what you're filling in. And eventually you're going to see a kind of a camouflage hidden word or letter or shape, whatever it is you chose. So step one, grid. Step two, you're adding a shape or a letter or a word. Step three, you really got to concentrate on filling in every other one. And don't forget, when you add in a shape, it does then add in more options for um, black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white. 
So take all that into consideration and you're gonna practice it right there. Next, the bullseye dart uh, grid. This one's pretty cool. So you're adding, again, kind of like very similar to the mandala step one, you add a X plus sign and an X, then you add circles, and then you fill in every other one with the circles. So I'm not gonna really show you this one. I feel like this one you can pretty much do on your own. So plus sign, X, add your circles, and then a lot like what you did for the checkerboard, you're filling in every other one and it's gonna look like a bullseye, like a dart grid. That's, that looks pretty cool too. Okay. You could freehand your circles or if you have one of these rulers, uh, you can use those rulers there. The next one is called Circus Tent. And Circus Tent is another really cool one. So you add a horizon line, kind of a lot like our perspective. So you add a horizon line be kind of anywhere on the page um, leave a little space on the bottom you're gonna add a vanishing point at the top in the middle so there's my vanishing point from that vanishing point I'm gonna add diagonals to that top line so optical illusions if you haven't noticed by now involve some perspective a lot of perspective in some cases. So what I just did was incorrect because I do want it to go on my vanishing or on my horizon line. So I will erase that. And I will add another line to there. From here, any diagonal line that I drew, I'm now adding a completely vertical line. And it'll look like a circus tent. And you could shade this in um, with colors. So you can make it look actually like a circus tent. That completely up to you. If you're gonna shade it in, figure out where your darks, mediums, and your lights are gonna go. Um, sometimes it looks cool if this is dark up here or you switch it so this could be dark and then this is light and then this would be light and then this would be dark so you can kind of flip-flop it a little bit and that can look kind of nice um, same thing here you can make this dark again so the darks line up so it goes dark, medium, to light. So play around with shading on this or add color. It's kind of up to you, color pencil marker. Um, so that can look nice how you shade that in. Right, you can also practice shading this in. Now this last one's called vibrations and some artists really love this and some artists um, they have a harder time with it. So step one is you add a wavy line. Step two, you want to create little points that you consider magnets. So that means wherever you draw the next lines that you're creating, anytime it passes a magnet, it's attracted to it, so it's drawn to that. And eventually you can create some really cool techniques and illusions with this. So I'm going to draw a basic wavy line. I'm going to add a magnet there and there. So I'm gonna start drawing my next line, same thing, oh, magnet's attracted to it. And then it pulls away, then it's attracted to that, and then it pulls away. So I'm gonna keep repeating this, attracted away, attracted away. I'm just repeating that's attracted to that. Okay. Now from here, I can have a little bit more fun. So I can add an extra magnet somewhere on a different line. So it's attracted to that, pulls away, attracted to that, pulls away, attracted to that. So I'm going to add extra magnets as I go along, as I see fit. And when I'm running out of space, I just don't draw where it goes anymore. So I would run out of space there, add that there. This can look so cool shaded in because where the magnets are, you can make darker and then the further away from the magnet it is lighter. And again, just add those. 
and I could fill those in. Okay. Now from the bottom part, I can continue that, or I can draw one here, or I could add an extra wavy line somewhere else, like that. So now I'm gonna start a whole new pattern. This looks really cool. So I want that to be magnetized to it. This looks cool when it's colored in, especially. Okay, from here, after you have attempted this worksheet, you're gonna be ready to try some more advanced optical art techniques. So that means there is a playlist, a YouTube playlist, with a bunch of different optical illusions that you're definitely ready to try and create. And you'll do that in your sketchbook once you finish this worksheet. So, hope you're successful. Hope you feel good about what you're doing. And I can't wait to see your illusions.